God helped me with this morning, and uh, again, not really a maybe a preaching outline, uh, but if you would turn Jeremiah 42, and uh, while she was singing that song, I thought about uh, something uh, that Brother uh, Krantz told me about Jacob. He said when he came home, his brother won't know what happened to him. And I think, now am I correct, your brother's down there now, is that correct? And then uh, your mother wanted to know what happened to you. Now, but I'm going to tell you what, when you get truly born again, yes, right? I mean, when you really get saved, you get a good, good dose of God, people notice the difference. If they don't notice the difference in you, You're right. good. so I'm glad he does pick up broken pieces. Yes, he does. Amen. God. Just got to bring them to him. Yes, so. I was reading in my devotions this morning, <clears throat> and uh, Jeremiah started with uh, chapter 41, but uh, I really, God impressed me with this, that I see all the spiritual carnage going on. I see that our country is in shambles. Because we, we've turned our back on God. I see that our churches are in shambles because we've turned our back on God. Our, our homes are in shambles. I mean, the whole thing comes to this spiritual matter, yes, sir. right? right. And it's like the light never comes on, right? It's, it's like people just can't get it. Right. And, I, and I understand that Satan blinds. And, um, but here, here's the thing that you and I, as, as believers, every person that, that says they're a Christian, a believer, we're not like those that are blind, Come on. right? right? We're, that's what the Bible tells us. Right. We're, we're to have some spiritual insight in things. Yes, the Bible tells us we're to walk circumspectly. We're to be sober and vigilant. And it tells me that we are, we're different. I didn't say we we're better. We're different. We, we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside. And, and I think what has bothered me is that I'm seeing more and more people that are embracing this godless mindset. Even, even among believers, right, that name the name of Christ. And, and I thought, you know, why is it that... Um, that we can't figure it out. And, and Jeremiah, you know the story. The God's people were in bondage. And Jeremiah in chapter 42, uh, actually over in chapter 40, God tells them really this in verse number 3. He says, Now the Lord hath brought, brought it and done according as he has said, because ye have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed his voice, and therefore this thing has come upon you. So he told him, he said, look, the reason you're in bondage is because you have heard God's voice. You've been privileged right. with the very word of God, right. and you've told him no. Amen. Right. And so they get all the way over here to chapter 42, and in verse number 2, uh, the Bible said, said uh, lays out in verse 1, uh, said, uh, Johanna, the son of Korea, and Jezaniah the son of uh, Hashai and all the people from the least even unto the greatest came near and said unto Jeremiah the prophet let we beseech thee our supplication be accepted before thee. Now notice what they said pray for us unto the Lord thy God even for all this remnant for we are left but a few of many as thine eyes do behold us. Right. So they said okay we're, we're understanding the message man of God. Here's what, will you pray for us? No, first thing I thought of is why didn't they pray themselves, right? right. Secondly, they asked him to pray. And then in verse uh, number four, then Jeremiah the prophet said unto them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray unto the Lord your God according to your words. And notice what he said. And it shall come to pass that whatsoever thing the Lord shall answer you, I will declare it unto you. I will keep nothing back from you. So he said, look, I'll pray. And what they were wanting is to, to be re released from bondage, right? They, they wanted to out of the captivity. And they said, will you pray for us? And 
Jeremiah said, I'll pray for you, but whatever God tells me is what I'm going to tell you. Right. right? Well, let's be honest. That's not what people want to hear today. It's not what they want to hear there. Right? And, and so in verse number 5, then they said to Jeremiah, the Lord be a true and faithful witness before, between us. And if we do not even according to all things for the which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us, whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we send thee, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. Right. So they said, we don't care what it is. Whatever you say, right. we're going to do. Yes, right? Why did they say that? Because they were expecting God, as he'd done so many times, to deliver them out of this bondage, right? To right. Basically, to answer the prayer the way they thought he should answer it, right. Right. okay? They said, sure, Jeremiah, you pray whatever you say to do, we're going to do. If you say God said do it, and I know Brother Jimmy is a pastor in 21 years, I've heard that. Listen, just preach it straight. I, listen, whatever God tells you to preach, preach. Whatever the Bible says, I'm good with it. Until it comes against you. Right. right? Everybody likes you to preach hard and straight yeah. until it comes against you. And then all of a sudden it's different. Right? And that's, that's what they were doing. And that's the day we live in. Right. So they said we'll do it. And then in verse 10 the Bible said if ye will still abide in this land. So here's what, here's what God told them. So listen. You're in captivity. But if you'll stay here. And in essence, what he's saying, if you will, if you will accept the chastisement, Amen. if you will accept the correction that I'm giving you, if you'll just stay where you're at. Now listen to what I'm saying. It's important. You're the one who did wrong. Right. But I still love you. And even in this time of correction and chastisement, I'm going to take care of you. Amen. That's what he's telling them, Amen. right? And so verse 10, he said, if you will still abide in this land... Then will I build you and not pull you down. He said, I will plant you and not pluck you up, for I repent me of the evil that I have done unto you. Be not afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom ye are afraid. Be not afraid of him, saith the Lord, for I am with you and to, uh, to save you and to deliver you from his hand. Right. So, a couple things. He's telling them, number one, everything does not have to be good in your life. For God to do something. Right? Because right. right? what they were looking for is they were probably remembering the days when things were good in Israel and good for their family, and they were not they were not in bondage to the king of Babylon. Right. And they were and what they were asking for is God put us back there. That's what we really want. Right? right? And he's saying, Listen, you stay where you're at. In your get this, you stay where you're at in your trial. And let me accomplish in you what I want to accomplish. Glory to God. And in the midst of that, I'm going to protect you. Yes, he will. God. Right? Hallelujah. See, a lot of times we, we get ourselves in the storm and we just want a quick exit out of it. Right. We don't want God to teach anything there. We, we, what we want is we want, Brother Sean, we want God to take us from where we basically put ourselves and pull us out of it. And a lot of times we don't want the lesson that comes with it. Now, again, go back because they said, whatever you tell us to do, we'll do, right? How many times have we made the same promise? All right? Now, look at verse 14. So that's what he said. Stay where you're at, right? And he said, they said, no. But we will go into the land of Egypt where we shall see no war, nor hear the sound of the trumpet. Nor have hunger of bread, and there we, will we dwell. They said, no, we're going to do it our way. Right. And in the Bible, Egypt is a type of the world. Right. So think about this. God had pulled them out of Egypt, yes. Red Sea experience, yes. taking care of their fathers and forefathers. Sure. And now they're wanting to go back to the very place that they were begging God to get out of. You're right? Come on. right? Come on. Go ahead. They, they were going back into their old life. That's right. And how many times have you, me, others, it's like when times get tough, Brother Matt, it's like, well, I'm just going to go back. Yeah. 
to what I was doing because this serving God stuff ain't working out too good. Right? And, and verse 15, Now therefore hear the word of the Lord. So he warns them again, Ye remnant of Judah, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, If ye wholly set your face to enter into Egypt and go to sojourn there, now they said they were going to dwell there. Dwelling means I'm, I'm, I'm living there. And he said, listen, if you even just pass through there, then it shall come to pass that the sword which ye feared shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt and the famine whereof ye were afraid shall follow close after you there in Egypt and there ye shall die. So then he goes to verse 19. He said, The Lord has said concerning you, O ye remnant of Judah, go ye not into Egypt. Know certainly that I have admonished you this day. So there's another warning. Over and over and over, God warns, right? In verse 21, he said, Now I have this day declared it to you, but ye have not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God, nor anything for the which he hath sent me unto you. Now therefore know certainly that ye shall die by the sword, by the famine, by the pestilence in the place whither ye desire to go into sojourn. Right. There it is again. Right. Now go down to chapter 43, verse number 2. Notice the wording. Then spake Azariah, the son of uh, Hoshai, and Johanan, the son of Kareah, and all the what? Proud, Proud men. That's right. Mm -mm. Nope, God, we got it. You're, you're not taking us in the direction we think we ought to go. So we're going to do it the way we want to do it. That's pride, right? And so, saying unto Jeremiah, thou speakest falsely. The Lord our God hath not sent thee to say, go not into Egypt to sojourn there. So again, we're no different today. It's like, you know... A church that will preach the Bible, the whole counts of God, it's like, well, it's never going to be a mega church because people don't want to hear the bad stuff. They want to hear the good stuff, right? So that's, that's where they were. Don't tell us the bad stuff, Jeremiah. Just tell us the good stuff. Tell us God's going to fix it, right? Tell us he's going to pick up the pieces. We don't want to hear about the judgment. We just want to hear all the songs of how, you know, it doesn't matter how far you go from God, God will he'll, he'll rescue you. I mean, we don't want to hear the other stuff. So they came to him and said, no, you're, you're, you're lying to us. You're, you're, not preaching the, you're not preaching the radical grace message we want to hear. And verse 7, the Bible said, so they came into the land of Egypt, for they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Go down to chapter 44, the word of the Lord. Verse 1, came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews which dwell in the land of Egypt, which dwell in uh, Migdal and uh, Taphinus and uh, at Noph and in the country of Pathros, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Ye have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah. And behold, this day they are a desolation, and no man dwelleth therein. Notice this, verse 3, Because of their wickedness, which they had committed to provoke me to anger, and that they went to burn incense and to serve other gods whom they knew not, Neither they, ye, uh, ye, ye, nor your fathers. Verse 5, but they hearken not, nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness to burn no incense unto other gods. Go down to verse number 9. He said, have ye forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the king of Judah, the wickedness of their wives and uh, your own wickedness and the wickedness of your wives, which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? They have not, in verse 10, humbled uh, even unto this day, neither have they feared nor walked in my law nor in my statutes that I set before you and before your fathers. And verse 11 said, Behold, uh, Therefore thus saith the Lord of uh, hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will set my face against you for evil and to cut off all Judah. So he warns them again. He said, Here's why, I'm, here's why all this is happening, because you have committed wickedness. You've not obeyed my word and you have, you've burned incense to idols. You, you, you've set up idols. Instead of worshiping me, you worshiped these other things. Good. Right? Yes. All right, so now let's go down to verse 16. 
The Bible says, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. They said, we're not going to do it. Now, notice why. Verse 17. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offering unto her as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings, and our princes in the cities of Judah in the streets of Jerusalem. Notice why. For then had we plenty of victuals, and we were well and saw no evil. So what they said, they said, they're in all this, they have all this problem. They said, Jeremiah, preacher man, we want you to pray for us. We want you to go to God for us. We want you to find out what he has to say. And you tell us and we'll do it. And he said, well, that's fine, but I'm going to tell you exactly what God says, right? They said, that's what we want. And he said, he's telling you to stay where you're at. Endure the chastening hand of God. He'll protect you in it, but do not go back to the world. Right? And they said, no, no, preacher man, you don't understand. That may be good for you and it may be good for them, but I see a better way and that better way is to go to Egypt. Yeah. Right? We don't care what you say. You're telling us wrong. Right? Yeah. right? Yeah. Go ahead. And so they did. Good. Then God lays it out there. He said, listen, you've, you've set up idols. Right. You've worshipped them. You've committed wickedness. Your fathers have. Your mothers have. Your, your wives, the leaders have. Is that where we're at? And they said, well, we're going to do what we want to do. And when we did what we wanted to do, things were a lot better than they are right now. And so what they were saying was, we're going to do what we think is best for us, right. and we don't care what God has to say about it. That's right. You're right. And what they did, they mistook the long suffering of God for the blessings of their own efforts. You're right? Because right? that's, that's what it was. God was continually trying to get them to come back and blessing them anyway because they're His people. And they wouldn't come back and they said, no, we, we don't believe God. We're going to do it our way. What? Right. Is that not where we are? Yeah. Right. I mean, every election we have, same thing. The economy, the economy, the economy. Gas is too high. Groceries too high. Right. 401K is down. We don't care how many babies they kill. Come on, go ahead, we don't care any, we don't carry any moral principle that comes out is a secondary thing right as a nation doesn't matter but we don't want God you look at churches you tell me oh we want revival we want God to move we want God to do something decent crowd on Wednesday night not a Sunday morning crowd right Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. If I don't want to go to church, I ain't going to church. If I don't want to read my Bible, I'm not going to read my Bible. If I don't want to pray, I'm not going to pray. Right? God ain't going to tell me where I can go and where I can't go. God's not going to rule my life. I'll let him have part of it when I, that's where we are. And so God is allowing some chastening, some storms to come in our lives and we're going, I got to run out of here. I got to get out of here as quick as I can because I don't like the discomfort I feel when I'm in this, right? right. So we got to find somewhere else to go. We got to find something else to do. We don't want to be around the things of God, Brother Johnny, when God said, listen, if you'll come back, it's not going to be easy, but if you'll come back then and you'll just accept the chastisement right. Right. And learn the lesson. Yes, sir. Then we can get back to restoration. Good. And so we just keep running to Egypt. Running, right. running, running. 
And so now we're at a, let's be honest, we're at, we're at the point that we've got to change everything. Right? right? People don't want to come to church, hear the word of God preached. They want to come to church. They want to, they want a concert, right? They want, they want a, they want a, they want a self-help message, right? They want something that's going to edify and uplift, and that's fine. Rebuke, right? Reproach, exhort. Two, two thirds of what he tells preachers to do is correcting, not me from the Word of God, right? One third is edification, exhortation. What we want is three thirds of telling us how good we are. And that's why we never get better. We never become more like Christ. We want a, we want a little devotion book. instead of See, we don't want to study the whole Word of God, Brother Matt, because there are things in here that are correcting. So we'll read a devotion book that will give you 365 days of encouragement because we don't want to feel bad. So the Lord's saying, listen, you're in this storm because you have put yourself in this storm, Israel. Right. Now you've got to go through the storm, but I'm going to be with you. And so just hunker down where you're at, get through it, I'm going to protect you. Right. And then we'll come out on the other end, Amen. you'll be better. They said, no, we don't want the pain. But you know what? Did you see what the Lord did? He said, if you go to Egypt, the very thing you're running from right. is what's going to kill you. Right. Amen. Amen. Here's what I'm saying. At some point in time, we have to do business with God. That's right. Amen. If we want revival... We as God's people have got to get down to business with God yes, and repent. Yes, sir. Won't happen any other way. Yes. That's right. And so I'm burdened because I, I see over and over and over and talk to people and, you know, they're I'm going through this. Well, you know, the Bible said, I know what the Bible said, but you don't understand. Right? right. Yeah, but it. Right here, this biblical principle, I know, but I feel like, boom, I think, boom. Right. I'm going to Egypt. That's right. That's right. Yes. I, don't care what, I don't care what God says, That's right. but you just told me to pray for you. I, yeah, but I want you to pray for me that God would send me to Egypt where things are easier. That's what I want, right? Yeah. right. And that's why we're not growing. It's, I'm saying it in general. I'm not talking about you. Unless you, it is you, right? right. Go ahead. But really, what we're seeing in Christianity is not people getting close to God and become more like Christ. It's just give me something that's going to make me feel good. Because yeah. right. I don't, I don't want to go through the storm. Right. But here, here's, I'm going to close with this. We're going to pray. Peter would have never had a chance to walk on his storm if he wasn't in the storm. Right? I mean, right. he couldn't have got out of the boat and walked, seen Jesus walk on top of his storm and then Jesus say, come on. That's right. If he wasn't in the storm. Right. If he'd have stayed on the shore, he couldn't have seen victory over the very thing that he thought was the worst. I mean, let's be honest. Here's some fishermen. There, if it was me and things got a little bit choppy, I'd be like, time to go back. That's right. You're right. These are experienced fishermen that did this for a living. So I had to think that it was not a small storm they were in. And here it is, Jesus walking on top of it. Amen. Peter said, bids me come. He said, come. Right. And you know this, as long as he kept his eyes on the Lord, right. he walked on his storm. I don't know, Brother Bart, I don't, 
I know and you know going forward prophetically things are going to get worse. Right? I know that. I don't know how, wor- how I don't know how much worse. Cuz let's be honest in my finite little mind brother Justin I would have thought if I I would have thought where we are now would be way past where we would be when when the Lord came back. Right. Brother Foy, I mean we're in my mind we're way out there but obviously we're not as far as we have to get before Jesus comes back. So if it's going to get even worse than it is now, we're going to, we're going to have to learn to persevere through some stuff. Right? And so the church house, again, is not for, for hiding. It is, it is to get the strength to go out and herald the message of Jesus. And I think the way we move forward is, is as a church, we we got to continue to hand out tracts and soul win and run bus and all. But but I really think we got to be greater prayer warriors, yes, sir. and not just in our homes, but right. in our church. Yes, sir. And so I I want to make Wednesday night as much about our prayer time as it is studying the Bible. And so we're going. Here, and here's what I want to do, all right? A couple things. We can't get good at, pr- at prayer unless we pray, That's right. right? And a lot of times our prayer time ends up being, here's my list of things that make me uncomfortable sure that I don't like God get me out of it. Good. But the Lord tells us we're to pray for one another. We're to intercede for each other. Now, let me ask you this. And I'm not asking you to share what they are. But how many of you this evening have some pretty, some pretty big burdens in your life? I do. So you don't, you don't have to know what they are. You've just seen a bunch of people raise their hand. Probably some still do didn't raise their hand. So you, you can pray for somebody. But here's the other thing. Who in your family? I mean, if we believe what we say we believe, Jesus is coming back. There's some of your family that's going to be left here. The Bible tells us we're to pray for our leaders. We're to pray for Jerusalem. Right? Right? I, I, we're, we're, we're trying to have a big day Sunday. Yes, What'd be wrong some some folks getting on a pew and saying, God, please fill this pew with sinners to get saved Sunday. Amen. See, because a lot of times what we do is we'll have prayer in just a minute and we'll, we'll give a little five-minute prayer, punch the clock, head to the house. And I'm not saying you got to stay an hour. I'm saying y'all stay till you're done. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, but I'm convinced, and I know what will happen. When we start doing this, there'll be people saying, I ain't going to church on Wednesday night because all they want to do is pray. <laughs> right? I mean, preacher preaches, but not like on Sunday. I want to hear preaching and, you know, Choir doesn't sing on Wednesday. I mean, it's really not church. But I don't think Jesus called it a house of preaching. That's right. That's right. House of choir singing. Come on, but he did call it a house of prayer. And yes, the, the very thing he said it is, is the very thing that's lacking in most of our churches. Amen. So let's do this. If you can gather around the altar, if you can't stay where you're at, if you want to stay where you're at and pray over your pew, do that. We're going to spend some time in